And joining me from Mountain View, California, we have Rob Enderley, Principal and Technology Analyst at Andy Lee Group. In fact, the Kensington Group has called him one of the more influential technology analysts around. Good to see you, Rob. What about these big blue Good earnings? Uh, you know, the market's seeing it as a disappointment, and you were looking for some better numbers last quarter. So how are you breaking down the figures? Well, I mean, they actually exceeded on bottom line growth. Uh, the, the problem was the top line. And the top line was hit, it looks like, primarily by currency exchange uh, misguesses, and most, mostly on the estimate side. So I'm not seeing a fundamental weakness. Also, in looking at the contracts, it looks like what happened mm -hmm. is they may have pushed a series of contracts out until next quarter. We'll know by the end of next quarter when they report. And if that's the case, then most of the top line trouble was either because of the currency exchange rate or because of an adjustment to make sure that the next quarter wasn't going to be a uh, too steep of a valley. And they may have pushed too much off into that quarter. Uh Rob, you're optimistic about these service signings because uh, the market sure is in. I mean, we're looking at the second straight quarter of declining service signings, so these contracts continue to fall here. Yeah, it's an unfortunate trend, but it looks like their new contracts actually came up. It was the old and sustaining contracts that dropped. That could showcase trouble, trouble for not only IBM but the segment. On the other hand, their pickups, which are probably at the uh, at the uh, uh, at at Oracle's harm at, at Oracle's disadvantage uh, so showed some positive flow as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, it makes me nervous. They had a very strong quarter uh, two quarters ago. Uh, the last two quarters haven't been as strong, uh, especially on the top line, and that does give cause for concern. But because a lot of that this time did appear to be cut because of currency exchange, I'm not seeing an endemic problem yet. But next quarter, if this continues, we could have a problem. Yeah, okay. So looking ahead then, uh, Rob, you know, we have Chief Executive Officer at IBM, Sam Pella Misano, expecting IBM to almost double operating earnings uh, to $20 per share by the year 2050. And we have these concerns about service signings. I mean, how realistic are these goals? Well, it's, you know, he hasn't missed much. I mean, he's not really known for, for oversetting expectations. He's been a relatively rational a CEO since he's been in space, so unless in this space, so unless, so unless he's found some new, new wonder drug that he probably should give up, uh, it's it's hard to cut him short. I mean, he's not like Carly Fiorina was, who couldn't seem to to name a quarter to save her life. He's been pretty good so far, so I think we can give him a quarter or so to see if you can find if if what he is saying is going to happen does in fact happen. If it doesn't, then we've got a serious problem with the blue. But I think I think it's still too early to cause call this as a problem, especially because all the other, at least most of the other tech stocks are showing an awful lot of strength at the moment. Yeah, there is a lot of strength, and uh, you're pretty a pretty straight shooter there, Rob. Let's talk about the tech space broadly, though. You know, we're looking at Big Blue and its earnings you're looking at for next quarter. Uh, do you see things uh, picking up for Big Blue? Is it going to be okay in 2010? Well, if I'm correct, and what they did is they pushed some contracts off in the next quarter, next quarter should be appreciably better because that revenue will now hit in that quarter where it drifted out from this one. And as I say, we'll see. You know, a lot of the times these games are played quarter to quarter to make sure there are no big hills or valleys. And sometimes they're mm -hmm. not played. You know, you've got a large multinational. You, you can get this kind of cumulative effect where too many contracts are moved out. As I say, the bottom line looked pretty good to me. So that, so that when only the top line seems to be hit, that, that often can be artificial. And it looks to be the case this time. But I would like to see a couple quarters to really be sure. Okay, let's uh, quickly make a comparison for the rest of the tech sector. You know, we had Intel reporting some uh, market-beating numbers. AMD doing pretty well. We're watching out for, yeah, but that's right, record earnings. We're watching out for Apple this weekend, Yahoo as well. I, I mean, broadly speaking, who has impressed you so far and who are you watching out for? Well, Apple should be very good. The, any problems with Apple will come after this quarter. They just had a very unfortunate day on Friday where, when we're still kind of waiting for all the flow through on that. It could be anything from a United States senator response that could be pretty harsh to a number of other things. And that's got us concerned. But at least with regard to the previous quarter, all the numbers were good. In fact, significantly above where most people expected. So they're supposed to be very strong during this reporting period. As I say, out quarters could be problematic, but we'll see. Um, Yahoo, Yahoo has been doing pretty well of late, uh, th though uh, Carol Bar uh, uh, Barretts, Barretts uh, the, uh, their CEO, has been under a tremendous amount of pressure to show the growth that she's promised. Uh, given where Yahoo was, which was almost failing, it's actually been holding up reasonably well. Google has been a problem. Uh, their, their expenses have been growing out of control. Top line growth hasn't been quite as good as I think a lot of folks hoped, and, and expense growth has been almost out of control. And, and that's got a lot of us concerned 
as expenses get out of line with revenues and, uh, and whether or not they can contain their margins. So, uh, so there is some nervousness, but once again, underneath all of this is a very strong market. In other words, demand isn't showing weakness. The problems we're seeing when there are problems have to do with management choices and, uh, and governance, and, and that, does not show, that does not indicate a weakness in the market, but in, but in, um, but in management. Okay, Rob, always a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Rob Enderley of the Enderley Group.